In this third video in our Flexible Budget Overhead Variances series, we're going to be looking at calculating the total overhead variances. So the first thing we'll do is draw all of our charts like we've been doing. We'll draw one for variable overhead. We'll draw one for fixed overhead. And then we're going to have one for total overhead. Now we can label our variances. So the variable variances are a spending variance and an efficiency variance. Fixed overhead variances, we have a spending variance as well. We do not have an efficiency variance for fixed, but we do have a production volume variance. So for our total overhead variances, we will have a total spending variance. We will have a total efficiency variance. And we'll have a total production volume variance. So now I'm going to have to show, basically we want to figure out how to calculate the total variances. That's what we're looking at in this particular video. And so I'm looking for an overall spending variance, an overall efficiency variance, and a total production volume variance. Well, if you look at the top two diagrams, we have a spending variance and an efficiency variance in variable, a spending variance and a production volume variance in fixed. So to get the total spending variance, we have the spending variance in variable plus the spending variance in fixed would give me the total overall spending variance. Now when I have a plus sign there, keep in mind these spending variances could be different signs. One could be favorable, one could be unfavorable. If they are different signs, you would subtract them to get the overall spending variance. The overall efficiency variance, well if you look at the top two charts, we only have one efficiency variance, so that will be the total efficiency variance. And now we need the total production volume variance. Well, if you look at the top two charts, we only have one production volume variance. So that will also be the total production volume variance. We can also have an overall flexible budget variance by summing the overall spending and efficiency variances. We can also have a total overhead variance by summing all three, spending variance, efficiency variance, and production volume variance, or we could take the flexible budget variance total and sum it with the production volume variance to get the total overhead variance. Now I want to tell you how we can get the pegs in the total diagram here. So peg number one in the total diagram is going to be calculated by taking peg one of variable plus peg one of fixed. And this first peg is going to be our actual overhead costs. So our total overhead cost. So peg one of each chart will give us the total peg one, actual total or actual overhead cost. The second peg in a total diagram is going to be acquired by taking the second the second peg in variable and the second peg in fixed added together and this is called our budgeted overhead costs the third peg in our total overhead diagram is going to be calculated by taking the third peg in variable plus the second peg in fixed. And this is going to give us our flexible budget overhead for actual outputs. Okay, so flexible budget overhead for actual outputs. And then the last peg in the total diagram is going to be calculated by taking the third peg of variable plus the third peg of fixed. And this is called standard overhead 
allocated to production. Okay, so standard overhead allocated to production. <clears throat> so I told you how to get the total variances one way, just bringing them down from the top two diagrams. The spending variance is also, the total spending variance is also the difference in peg one and peg two. The efficiency variance is the difference in pegs two and three. And the production volume variance is the difference in pegs three and four. Now briefly, I want to introduce the, the four peg system in case your textbook talks about this. And the Pearson textbook, the Horngren actually does talk about the, the four peg system. So we want to introduce that so you actually know what's going on with a four peg system. And you can probably understand why since the total overhead diagram down here does have four pegs. So here are the four peg systems and we can see here we have our variable and we have our fixed overhead diagrams and you can see in this case we have four pegs on each one. So one, two, three, four pegs for variable, one, two, three, four pegs for fixed. The reason I use a three peg system is so that it's very similar to what you did for direct materials and direct labor. But you can also see for variable overhead, there is never a production volume variance. There is also for fixed overhead, never an efficiency variance. It's always zero. So therefore I leave those pegs off my system because there's no reason to calculate them because they're always zero. So that's the difference in a three peg and a four peg system.